Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, your go-to source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We hope you tune in often for all things people management, organizational development and change, organizational leadership, and social impact related. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Michelle Molitor about cultivating your confidence and mastering your mindset. Michelle Molitor, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Hey, thanks for having me again, Jonathan. It's great to be here. Yeah, I'm excited to have you back. Uh, So for listeners, we had a bit of a technological snafu. Uh, Michelle joined me last week for an episode, and we had a really awesome conversation. And then the file got corrupted, and so we weren't able to do anything with that recording. And uh, I suppose it was a good lesson to me that uh, it's always good to have redundancies and backups. So Michelle and I are doing it again this week. Uh, We're going to, yeah, yeah, it'll be fun. We're going to continue the conversation. Um, Today, we're going to be focusing on cultivating your confidence and mastering your mindset. And before we dive on into the discussion, I wanted to share Michelle's bio with everybody. Michelle Molitor is the founder and CEO of Nectar Consulting, Inc., and co-author of the best-selling book, Breakthrough Healing. She works with executives and entrepreneurs, bringing more than 25 years of experience, intuitive insights, and strategic business savvy to their success. She's an expert at enhancing the capacity of leaders to build high-performing teams and exponentially increase bottom line results. Michelle's unique rapid rewiring approach is a culmination of years of study in the realms of emotional intelligence, neuroscience, organizational psychology, and rapid transformational therapy. She helps catalyze shifts in thinking and eliminate mental and emotional blocks to rapidly rewire your brain for greater confidence and success. A nationally recognized speaker, certified executive coach, rapid transformational therapy practitioner, consultant, trainer, and writer, Michelle's passion for helping others amplifies uh, to amplify their natural talents and expand their leadership is conveyed through all aspects of her work and her writing. Uh, again, Michelle, it is wonderful to have you on the podcast today. I'm excited to have this conversation. Before we dive on in, anything you would like to share by way of background or personal context or anything like that, and then we'll get going. Sure. Yeah. So I've I've been a, a certified coach and therapist now for 20 years. Um, but before that, in my my former life, I was a creative director in web development. Um, I was moved to the San Francisco Bay Area at the height of the dot-com boom. It was very exciting. And um, ultimately, I got bullied out of my job. And it uh, was pretty devastating for me, and it shattered my confidence. And so I discovered this thing called coaching and hired a coach to help me figure out what to do next because I was very much a deer in the headlights, Jonathan, of, oh my gosh, what do we do now? Because I was, I was petrified to hand my resume to anybody. And in the process of being coached, I, I really found my true calling. Um, it was like all the cells in my body kind of came into alignment. And so I went on to get trained and certified and started my company, Nectar Consulting, back in 2001 and been doing it ever since. And um, uh, throughout all of that process, I've always been a bit of a learning junkie, um, learning, you know, new tools and methodologies and how our brains work and um, why some people have confidence and others don't. And how do you reclaim it once it's been shattered, scattered, splattered and fried all over the sidewalk, as in my case. Right. And so I'm really passionate about this work and Several years ago, I discovered uh, this process called rapid transformational therapy, and it's literally a way of getting it at a subconscious level to identify the root causes of those beliefs, those blocks that are all that not only are having an emotional impact on you, but can even lead to physical impacts on your body. And 
so I've combined RTT as we call it with my coaching and uh, I call it rapid rewiring because in as little as 30 to 90 days, um, I'm able to help folks identify those those underlying blocks and their subconscious programming, um, rewrite them and rewire their neural pathways for greater success in a very short period of time to improve their health, their well-being, um, and create more joy and success in their lives. And that flows through, you know, personal and professional lives. And it's just really joyful to watch people thrive. Yeah, that's wonderful. And I appreciate you sharing a little bit about your background and what kind of catalyzed you moving into this, uh, this space and working with people and as a coach and, and helping others to find out their potential, to find their confidence, to hone their mindset. I think that's uh, super important. Uh, it's always important, but it, I think it's even more important um, in this day and age around uh, the, this vastly and, and quickly shifting uh, work landscape. Uh, we've been during, you know, facing COVID situations, remote work. We have disruptive technologies all around us. Things are shifting. The, you know, everything, are, there's no like firm foundation almost, it seems like, uh, with work. Uh, but when we can connect back to our quiet confidence and feel assured about who we are, what we're trying to do, what we're trying to accomplish, and find confidence in our skills, our capabilities, uh, then we can weather those storms and we can roll with the punches and we can, you know, uh, take take one uh, difficult situation and make it into new opportunities. Uh, so I think that's that's a really tremendous thing that everyone needs these days. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about confidence. Now, sometimes when when I hear people talk about confidence, they're what they're describing is kind of the puff, puff out your chest, blustery kind of person who puts on what I would consider to be a facade of confidence. Um, yes. They're trying to they're trying to demonstrate themselves to those around them as though they, they feel certain, they feel confident, they, and everyone should look to them. And why doesn't that work? And why, what do you mean by confidence and how should we try to cultivate that? Now, that's a great, great distinction, Jonathan. So the confidence that I'm pointing to is, as you said, that quiet, calm confidence, that place of, I know who I am, I know what my talents and my expertise is, and I and I know who I'm not, right? And I'm able to step fully forward into that, authentically sharing my my knowledge, my expertise, my wisdom that I've gathered along my path. Um, the the flip side of that is that that false facade of I have all the answers and I know what I'm talking about, but really those folks are just hiding behind that facade of, oh my God, I'm afraid I'm going to be found out, right? You can, I often refer to that as imposter syndrome, right? Um, People are going to find out I don't have all the answers or um, they think I'm smarter than I actually am, but I have to keep this facade up because I'm afraid I'll lose my job or um, I'll get bullied or something, right? And, And I can say this because in my former career, I was dealing with that false bravado. Um, and it, it was just like, let me just paddle harder underneath the, the surface so that I can make sure that I keep it all together. But it was super stressful and nerve wracking and um, was very bad for my well being and, and my mental health. Um, and so when you're able to arrive at this, deeper place of authenticity, really. This is who I am. This is who I'm not. Um, This is my sweet spot. And this is, you know, I know some stuff here and then way out here, I don't know anything about what I don't know, right? So for everyone who's listening, it's, it's about finding the things that you do really well, that come naturally to you. And then the places where you can learn, you can always learn and grow. Um, but if it feels like you're pushing rocks uphill, it's probably not the thing that you do most naturally and you need to get some support somewhere or another, right? One of the 
the tools that I use with a lot of clients, both individuals and with teams, is a um, called Talent Dynamics, and it's a great way to identify that place where you operate from most easily, most effortlessly, almost as if you, you take it for granted because, well, doesn't everybody do that? But when you realize, oh no, that's my superpower. Oh, okay. And you, it takes on a whole different perspective on, on how you approach it and the confidence which you can bring to it um, without second guessing yourself or dismissing it. Yeah, I, I think that's right. And you know, as I think about confidence, I think about those in my life who have exhibited what I would consider to be true confidence, the kind of confidence that draws me to them, right? Yes. Uh, it's, it's, it's not the bravado. It's, it's, uh, it's people who are authentic, who are sincere, uh, who genuinely care. And, and they just go about doing what they do. And they're not so worried about what everyone else thinks. And you don't see inconsistencies between what they say and what they do. So they're, they're walking the walk, you know, in, and not just um, espousing nice values, but they're actually doing it and consistently. Yeah. So that's the kind of confidence that I strive to obtain for myself. And, and it, it seems like often those people who are with all the vibrato and, you know, the pounding the chest kind of confidence they're really just insecure people who feel like they have to lift themselves up by pushing everyone else down. And, yes. and it, and it really is just a facade. And, and that's a, that's a very common thing, right? When, when our, our fears, our insecurities get kicked up, um, the natural tendency from, a non-authentic place is to, I'm going to make you feel bad about yourself so I can feel better and elevate myself in my own eyes, right? Um, but those looking in on that behavior see what that is and see that it is essentially bullying and it, it is essentially um, someone trying to mask their own fears, right? So, as you look around the landscape of your life, if you see people in your life who um, are having those behaviors, um, you can, instead of being fearful of them in your own mind's eye, you're like, wow, I actually feel sorry for them because they're scared. They're actually scared about something. We don't know what that something is that they're trying to hide behind, but um, when you can come from a greater place of compassion and not let yourself um, get sucked into the power play that they're trying to do, I always tell my clients, just be Teflon, right? They're, they're Velcro, right? They've got the little scritchy part of the Velcro and they're trying to get into you to make themselves feel better. But when you're just Teflon and there's nothing for them to attach to and any comments or negativity that they come at you with, if you, <clears throat> you can respond with, wow, it sounds like you're having a bad day, right? There's nothing for them. They, they literally will take that frustration and they will go somewhere else and, and try and attach it to somebody else. Cause essentially they're trying to get rid of their own frustrated anger and energy. And they're trying to dump it on you. Like, here, you take it. I don't want it. It's like, no, it's not for me, but thanks. Have a nice day, right? And it totally shifts the dynamic. Yeah, I, I think that's a really great, generous approach in interacting with, with people in that kind of a situation. And, and so, go again, going back to how you were describing it and kind of a little bit of what I pointed to, I think what we're, we're, what we're looking for is finding our inner peace, finding our confident calm, our quiet calm, uh, and confidence that will allow us to to roll with the, the difficulties in life, and I think that connects to the other point I wanted to focus on today, and that that is healthy mindsets. Um, tell talk to us a little bit more about the types of unhealthy mindsets people often carry around with them: the the negative self talk, the paradigms, and the and the the limiting beliefs that people often carry with them that we need to recognize, we need to acknowledge, and then we can start to dismantle them and start to move forward in a positive way. I'm 
excited to announce the publication of my new book from HCI Press, The Alchemy of Truly Remarkable Leadership, Ordinary Everyday Actions That Produce Extraordinary Results. Consider how the nature of work has shifted over the past 50 years. With increased globalization, rapid technological advancement, and the shift in economic composition, the average job of today looks very different than the average job of 50 years ago. What will the jobs and organizations of tomorrow look like? Moreover, what does this all mean for organizational leaders? What are the core competencies and capabilities of organizations and their leadership that are prepared for continued disruption and geopolitical and socioeconomic shifts? Regardless of what the future holds, increasingly, leaders need to be socially minded, data driven, decisive, champions of talent, and disruptors of the traditional notions of leadership, teams, organizations, and work. The alchemy of truly remarkable leadership will help you to explore your own leadership competencies and capabilities and consider ways to apply and implement them into your workplace and personal life. Yes. So I, I worked with thousands of people from all over the world and some of the common theme songs, as I like to call them, are simply these underlying beliefs, oftentimes which we we picked up as children, we took on, we adopted um, beliefs such as I'm not enough, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not something enough, fill in the blank, um, love, success, uh, peace of mind, um, money is not available to me, something's not available to me because I'm different, right? I'm not like you, I can't have that. And we, we take on these beliefs oftentimes as small children, because as children, our brain is just a sponge. It's just taking in information, right, from our environment. And if uh, you're in any kind of environment that has any kind of negative beliefs going on, you see that as, um, I say, it's like the water you're swimming in. You don't recognize it for what it is. It's just what is, and you don't know any different, right? And so if you were told that you were bad or wrong or not good enough or not smart enough or who you as a child by a parent or sibling or a teacher or something, um, oftentimes we, we take that on as the truth as children because we don't have the mental processing ability to discern. Well, that's not who I am, right? But as adults, we can like, nope, I'm not five anymore and I'm not in that situation. And I know that I I am enough or I can take on the idea that I am enough, that um, I am capable, I believe in myself. And even if you don't believe it, Jonathan, if you start telling yourself, I am enough, I am enough, I am enough, put it on sticky notes, um, you know, record your own voice saying it to you, sing a little song about it, whatever it is, you know, I have funny little things that I do. I'm like, oh, I'm enough, I'm enough, right? And I used to do that when I first discovered this about myself. And the mere fact of repeating that to yourself over and over and over again, right, as a mantra Um, you're literally building new neural pathways in your brain, right? So in the previous version of yourself, the stress response would be because it was the well-worn groove. Well, I'm not enough. I'm different. I don't fit in. I don't belong here. When you just decide, you consciously choose to replace that and build a new neural pathway around, I am enough. I am smart. I am capable. I can do this. I believe in myself. That becomes the new go-to path. And over a period of time of doing this, it literally shifts how you start to show up in the world. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. And, and it starts just with the acknowledgement, right? And then uh, disrupting those thoughts, uh, those limiting types of thoughts, whatever you know, this paradigm may have been from your upbringing or whatever the context may be, you have to acknowledge it, you recognize it, you, uh, at that point, you can start to proactively address it. And to your point, sometimes it's as simple as just 
reinforcing positive self-talk, you know, before you walk into a meeting, uh, you know, where, where you, maybe you feel like you don't have confidence or you're nervous around a particular person who's in the room. Uh, I know I've been in that kind of situation before where I know there's, there's someone that is a bully. He's in the room. He's, I know how the meeting's going to go. I know there's going to be some personal attacks, um, but I need to be able to rise above it. I need to be able to get my point across and, and I'll try to prepare myself mentally before going into that meeting. Um, not only walking myself through scenarios of how it might go and how I can respond, but just gaining the confidence, gaining the calm to walk into that situation and feeling, uh, telling myself that I can do this, you know, that's, that's important. And it may sound hokey to people, but that kind of, you know, positive self-talk can make a huge, huge difference. It can be the, it really can be the difference between whether you, you find yourself in that situation and it's kind of deers in the headlight um, kind of a moment and you shrink, or if you can rise to the occasion and be able to, to handle it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, You know, the more you can do that, the more grounded you can feel in that, um, the more expansive your energy becomes, right? We're all just energy, right? And so the more you you can um, cheer yourself on, be your own internal cheerleader, um, it actually helps to raise your energetic vibration, which expands your energy, which then creates that subtle and intangible presence of you in the room that people are like, oh, they sit up, they take notice, they lean in because there's something unique about you that they can't quite put their finger on, but they want to know more about, right? And anytime that negative self-talk starts to come up, I always tell my, my clients, just say, thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing, right? There's, there's a part of your brain called the amygdala, which is your fight or flight mechanism, right? That has you be that deer in the headlights or makes you want to run. And I like to call her Amy. Amy's part of your limbic brain. And uh, you can just say, thank you for sharing, Amy. We've got this because that part of your brain is simply trying to keep you safe and alive and on the planet, right? But your boss, that bully on the team is not a saber tooth tiger that your limbic brain that you got 5,000 years ago <laughs> is worried about. So you just got to shift the, the narrative and keep telling yourself those new positive thoughts um, until you believe them, even if you don't. Just keep repeating because eventually it will sink in and you'll be like, oh, yeah, I, I am enough. I've got this. I can do this, right? And it makes such a powerful difference um, because physiologically, it creates a whole different response in your body. Instead of Amy creating this fight or flight response, which shoots cortisol and adrenaline through your body, and over the same time, that creates a whole host of physical ailments. Instead, you're creating the release of dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, endorphins in your brain, which are your happy chemicals, your feel-good chemicals that helps your body become more peaceful, more calm, more balanced, more centered. And that's what we all are looking for, I think, especially in these crazy times. Yeah. And I think it's also worth noting that this is a lifelong journey. Uh, yes. I, I don't know of anybody who has like figured this out and then they're just good, you know, and they, and they can go the rest of their life without ever having to recenter. Check. <laughs> yeah. Check. I'm good. I don't need to worry about this anymore. I don't know anyone like that. Um, I'm certainly not like that. Maybe there's something wrong with me, but I'm certainly not like that. I ha- it has to be regular ongoing effort and attention um, and, and finding opportunities to practice mindfulness and, and meditation and other types of uh, behaviors and breathing, you know, just things that can help you to do this and to do it daily and find, get, get into habits of, of doing this consistently. And that will put you in that situation where you can deal with the difficulties that come. And if you, you know, I, I, it's great if you, if you had trauma in your past or you had negative framings and thinking in the past and you've kind of feel like you've gotten past that, that's wonderful. I'm really happy for you, but it's, you can slip back into it. It's, it's not, 
you know, now that you kind of master that, you're good to go. So I, I think that's worth noting. And it's something we have to reinforce in ourselves. And, and we can also, you know, reinforce with our loved ones, uh, both people at home, but also with colleagues we value in the workplace, like re- remind people when, because everyone has their ups and downs, their ebbs and flows, yes, and their, their good absolutely. days and their bad days. And if someone's having a really tough day, remind them, um, you know, uh, sit with them, be with them. You don't need to lecture them. You don't need to try to fix it for them, but you can encourage and remind them, you know, of who yeah. they are and, and what they can do. One of my, one of my favorite tools that I like to share with teams, Jonathan, is it's the, it's a little exercise that has them comment on their colleague, not for what they're doing, but for who they're being, right? I could say, Jonathan, great job on completing that report on time and running that meeting so well, right? That's a doing activity. But the beingness of this is, Jonathan, I really appreciate the leadership that you demonstrated that had that meeting go so successfully because you brought the calm confidence to the room and everybody leaned into that, right? That's a different kind of compliment, right? That hits you at the heart level versus the head level, right? And I guarantee you, every time I've done this exercise with teams, we put people in small groups, right? And they kind of take turns. And nine times out of 10, somebody starts crying like, I didn't know you saw that in me. Thank you so much. That means so much, you know, because we don't, we don't get seen that way. We don't get recognized that way very often. And when you do, it really hits home because ultimately what I know from all my work is that as humans, we want to be seen, heard, and respected for the value that we provide and what we bring, the contributions that we bring to the table. And when you can see that, recognize that in your colleagues, it has them open up, shine a little brighter, and step more fully into the work that they're there to do. And when you can do that, regularly, authentically, genuinely as a leader for your team, that creates a a really high performing team because that kind of recognition is head and shoulders above the monetary um, benefits that people get from working, right? Money's great and we all need it to survive. But when someone can shine a lot and light on you and see into your heart for who you actually are and and the goodness that you're bringing to the work that just opens people up like little flowers <laughs> it's just yeah, like oh it, there's the sun it feels so good it's it's powerful it's it's those types of genuine compliments um and affirmations are just powerful they hit to the to the heart of the matter to into the to your inner soul and it, it builds trust it builds relationships and it, it just speaks to, to who we are as, as people and our desire for connection um, yes. so much more. Well, Michelle, this has been a real pleasure. Uh, the time has flown by. Uh, we're, we're near the end of our time today. But before we close, I wanted to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can get connected with you, find out more about what you're doing currently, and then give us the last word on the topic for today. Sure. So you can always uh, uh, tune in to NectarConsulting.com uh, to learn more about um, the one-on-one work to do, but also the, the corporate well-being programs that we have around emotional, social, and leadership well-being um, that has helps bring out the best in people and in your teams. Um, I'm happy to have a, a complimentary discovery call with anyone who's interested to, to learn more. Um, And, you know, the most important thing that I want to leave everyone with is start to notice the negative thoughts that might be running you, right? Just noticing them like the clouds passing in the sky. And when you can start to notice them and and step back from it and then decide, well, what would you like to tell yourself differently, right? And choose consciously from this place, from where you are now. I am enough. I am worthy. I am capable. Whatever that mantra needs to be for you and let that become your new go-to pathway to support and empower you in your success, your happiness, and your well-being. So thank you for having me on the show, Jonathan. It's been a real pleasure. 
I love it. Uh, it's been, been a pleasure, Michelle. It's uh, Thank you so much for joining me. I encourage listeners to reach out, get connected with Michelle, find out more about what she and uh, her team at Nectar can do for you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you have a great week. We are excited about the launch of HCI's new magazine, Human Capital Leadership. Human Capital Leadership is a free, interactive e-magazine designed to help individuals, leaders, and organizations find innovative approaches to maximize their human capital potential. We will be publishing issues quarterly in August, November, February, and May. Check out the first issue and let us know what you think. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week. Check out our new weekly LinkedIn newsletter, Alchemizing Human Capital, exploring industry trends via original research and interviews with executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We look forward to having you join us.